minus 120% advisor cost reduction from monuments alone and three special world conquest monuments as part of the massive monuments rework. My name is Ludi and today we'll be explaining in depth what the new rework is and how it's going to affect your games as well as we'll be doing a tier list for all the monuments in EU4 currently available. The way they structured it now is basically there's three types of monuments. There's global monuments which everybody takes takes advantage of. There's culture monuments which you need to have a specific culture accepted. So those are technically kind of like the global ones as long as you accept the particular culture as well as religious monuments which you need to be a specific religion. So those are kind of lock monuments. If we get 6,000 likes for this video I'm gonna do another similar video for Vicky3 explaining in depth everything we know about it so far. Also I'm trying to get 100,000 subs by the end of the year and if we do my reward for you guys is a mega campaign. I'm gonna do a thousand years from the Middle Ages all the way to the Second World War. Let's talk about the advisor cost reduction monuments first. Three of them are remarkably close to each other. Of course, the old one that you probably know is in Athens that gives minus 20% advisor cost reduction, one extra advisor possible, and corruption reduction once it's fully upgraded. Next to it, we have the pyramids that also offer minus 15 advisor cost reduction and minus five idea cost reduction. Take note, in order to take advantage of this, you actually need to accept Egyptian as one of your accepted cultures or you have to be in the pagan religious group. So essentially anyone can take advantage of this as long as they accept Egyptians. Similarly, you have to accept Greek for the Athens monument. In Italy, we have another advisor cost reduction monument, namely the Santa Maria del Fiore, a newly added monument that offers minus 20 advisor cost, monthly splendor plus two, and prestige decay minus one percent. Another the slightly older monument is the Kabanzathari Palace which offers minus 20 advisor cost reduction and is found in Pego at the start with the fifth advisor cost reduction monument appearing in Mewar a brand new one as well minus 20 advisor cost reduction special units plus 10% and prestige plus one the reality is this is probably one of the best monuments in the game right now because the special units force limit modifier is massive also it's global so you don't have to accept uh, Rajasthani as a culture or anything of the sorts. And the sixth monument that offers another minus 20 advisor cost reduction is the one in the north of uh, America here, but your advisor must have your primary culture or the culture of your ruler, as well as you get plus two max promoted culture from this one. So it actually is a really good monument that as a colonial nation, you should be gunning for. Now that we talked about these special five ones, let's take the rest of the monuments continent by continent and explain explain them a little bit as we go along. Since we are in North America, let's talk about the newly added ones. We have one that is unique, Totemist. So only Totemist can take advantage of this and it gives you 20% global manpower modifier. This is absolutely epic and it makes playing Totemist even better. Totemist right now is still the strongest religion in EU4 and with this monument together with the Mesa Verde that offers minus 10 tech cost and minus 10 idea cost means that Totemist is the king of religions still. Other newly added monuments here include the San Antonio Mission, which is probably one of the worst monuments around. South of the uh, San Antonio Mission, we have the Zacatecas Mine City that offers minus 0.5 interest per annum. This is not that bad, especially if you take on a lot of loans. For multiplayer games, this one is going to be really good, together with the one in uh, the south part of America, which also offers minus 0.5 interest per annum. The United States received a special and unique unique monument also. Only the US or a former colonial nation can take advantage of this and you get minus 25 state governing costs for all of your states. That means that every single province is going to cost you 25% less governing costs. It's like the opposite of Prussia. This is actually a really good modifier. I'm a little bit jealous that it's only available to the US and former colonial nations but hey it is what it is. Another added monument in uh, Mexico is the Tikal which offers stability cost modifier minus 30% and you need to accept the Mayan as a culture and we have three modifiers that be insanely great pirate nations we have the city of Tortuga which offers 50% private tier efficiency as well as power projection from insults doubled and blockade force required plus a hundred the Cartagena de Indias fort system as well offers another blockade fleet required plus a hundred and hostile fleet 
attrition plus 10 all of your provinces so if you get this upgraded to maximum and somebody is blockading you their ships are literally going to be melting away whenever they blockade you and the third is uh, Fuerte del Moro which offers again blockade force required plus 100 naval force limit plus 30 percent as well so altogether we got blockade force required plus 300 percent if you own all three of these monuments and the South American continent we have a few new ones as well we get the uh, authority and trade efficiency plus 20 percent from uh, Chapaknam as well as the Chan Chan Citadel which starts at a level two and offers up to plus two diplo relations for anybody in the world it's not restricted to any culture however Machu Picchu is restricted to Andean so you need to accept whatever culture we have here Tiwanaku offers missionary strength plus two and religious unity plus 30 but it is restricted to the Inti religion and we already showed the uh, Cerro Rico del Potosi Asia definitely has seen a lot of newly added monuments with the Indian subcontinent having the majority of these newly added monuments which honestly make the Dharmic religion insanely overpowered and the Micronesian parts we have the uh, Nam Madol that is great for colonizers and you probably know about this the other two Majapahit monuments and the one in uh, Bali have not been changed but we have a new one in uh, Ase which offers missionary strength and tolerance of the true faith only for Muslim group however in the northern parts we have the uh, Gyeongkyung palace which offers tech cost minus 10% as long as you accept the culture and the porcelain tower of Nanjing with an extra 30% institution spread and institution embracement cost minus 15% and even the Oirats got their own monument here we have 30% religious unity for basically Buddhist Tengris pagans and so on now for la creme de la creme here a massive amount of monument in a small region starting from the south we have some specific Hindu monuments that can give you diplo rep plus two and tolerance of the true faith culture conversion cost reduction and missionary strength with religious unity plus 25 percent and estate loyalty the Elora caves also offers tolerance of everybody but only for Dharmic religion and the sum temple in Koranak gives another 25 religious unity so that means we get 50 percent religious unity already as a Hindu nation and don't forget we have another 25 religious unity from the Lhasa temple that is available to Hindus Dhaka got its own monument too with one merchant trade steering and ship trade power plus 30 percent chance of a new air plus 50 percent from uh, Kajuraho and monthly air claim chance the advisor cost reduction that we talked about and la creme de la creme here the Varanasi temple that gives you 15 percent core creation cost reduction and aggressive expansion minus 10 percent so for a world conquest especially as the Mughals you want to make a dash line for this temple and upgrade it to level three in the south of the Timurids a new monument the Bam Citadel that offers one extra merchant and caravan trade power plus 40 percent remember that we also have caravan trade power in the south of Morocco so we essentially get 73 percent caravan trade power from these two monuments making them pretty pretty well off when they work together Persia gets another monument here that offers splendor the Zoroastrian monument was not changed sadly but that's actually a good thing we deserve the 10 percent discipline Coptic nations in Armenia also get an extra missionary strength plus two and tolerance of the true faith with the prestige per missionary both of these monuments offer plus three missionary strength and missionary strength against heretics kind of underwhelming both of them not gonna lie these were not changed at all but we get a new monument in uh, the churches of Lalibela with another one prestige missionary maintenance cost and missionary strength but it's available only for Coptic nations so that means Coptic nations have two monuments right now all together working our way into Africa we have the kill one city itself as a monument that offers ship trade power plus 30 percent and the merchant trade power plus four this is secretly really powerful the merchant trade power plus four if used wisely tech cost minus five and cost to fabricate claims minus 30 percent for mutapa i'll be honest by the time you manage to upgrade this it's not going to make much of a difference and the claim cost is super underwhelming so i don't know what they were thinking about when they made this one hopefully they rebalance this make it cheaper or add some Something else to it. Benin gets its own walls of Benin that doesn't offer any wall bonuses but they do offer trade power modifier and prestige from land battles as well as the new Sankori Madrasa that gives you a minus 10% tech cost reduction. The last newly added African monument is the holy city of Cairo 1 which uh, gives tolerance of the true faith and institution spread in true province. Europe has seen a bunch of new monuments here and we'll start from the east we have the St. 
Petersburg Winter Palace that gives you minus two national unrest and stability cost minus 30% and this is global so anyone can take advantage of this but here's the big brain move about this the Winter Palace goes amazingly with the Rila monasteries in Bulgaria that offer another minus 30 stab cost and 25% religious unity so if you're an Orthodox nation in Eastern Europe getting this is gonna be pretty important early on we also have the blue mosque or the Sultan Ahmed mosque in uh, Istanbul that offers more tolerance of the true faith and they've re-established the mausoleum it now offers average monarch lifespan plus 10% so if you have a really good monarch you want to upgrade this to make sure that he doesn't die as fast as he otherwise would die Italy received some new monuments too in Naples we have governing capacity plus a hundred and reform progress plus 15 for the early game this is gonna be one of the most sought after monument especially if you mix this in with the one in uh, Castile that offers you another 10% governing capacity modifier so it scales up extremely well Portugal revived their Belém Tower which now gives trade power globally and national sailor modifier before we continue into Europe I actually want to mention the three world conquest monuments that I was talking about earlier obviously the first one is the previous version admin efficiency plus five Alhambra the second one is clearly the one in India that offers core creation cost reduction minus 15 and the third one is a super super hard to detect monument in Malta essentially the Malta forts which give you war score cost versus other religions minus 15 to put this into perspective everybody in the Mediterranean has a different kind of religion so you will a hundred percent take advantage of this monument the earlier you build it the more you're gonna take advantage of it Milan has the Duomo di Milano which gives resistance to reformation not gonna lie super underwhelming and uh, the Doge's palace gives reform progress growth and prestige again not really amazing but it starts at level two so that kind of makes up for it I guess if you're playing as the Emperor of the HRE you got two HRE specific monuments now we have the Pro historical center that gives you Imperial Authority flat plus 0.15 and the Ulm ministry that gives one prestige and Imperial Authority from free cities plus 20% also we have the Biblioteca Corviniana which gives minus five idea cost reduction and the Romanians got a monument also the brand castle that gives national garrison growth and fort maintenance on border with rivals as a Romanian myself I'm a little bit disappointed to see that this was added as this is honestly just a tourist trap this is not where Dracula was born he didn't live here he has no connection to this castle and there's so many beautiful castles and landmarks in Romania that could have been chosen as monuments but hey maybe in a future update Krakow also has a monument namely the Krakow cloth holes that offer two merchants and global trade power and we also have the Malborg castle with minus 10% mercenary cost Brandenburg's got some prestige from land battles and army tradition from battles this is not really amazing and especially by the time you build this it's gonna be way too late because you're gonna have a hundred prestige and a hundred army tradition by that point anyway and it's gonna be pretty easy to keep it at the a hundred percent both of them the Dutch also get 10% goods produce modifiers super super little in my opinion should have been 20% at least or maybe 25% so now that we have an idea of what new monuments are in the game and how they affect the game I think it's time that we do a tier list to better visualize it the first monuments that we're gonna add are obviously the five advisor cost reduction monuments because they definitely are a grade monuments that have a massive impact on our games and if we rush for these monuments we're gonna basically never pay for advisors ever again except the bare minimum next up is the pirate specific monuments from the Caribbean area which would make a huge impact if you are playing as a pirate nation but if you're not playing as a pirate nation these are not gonna be as impactful as they otherwise would be so I would say because they're super situational they deserve Deserve a solid C tier now I want you guys to take into account the fact that anything that is not on this list is because they're really bad so they're not even worth being on the list in fact whatever is even D tier is better than everything else that is not here on this particular list moving on we're gonna add the Kaaba as a B grade monument this monument is again locked behind a specific religion so unless you're in the Muslim group you're not gonna really be able to take advantage of the bonuses that this offers even though though they are significantly good bonuses for that matter we're gonna do the same with this one the Mesa Verde which offers the tech and idea cost reduction will be B list because it's locked behind totemist same thing goes for the new totemist monument that offers 20% manpower only totemist can use it so that's why it is
is a B-grade monument. We can do the exact same thing for the Bamiyan statues. Another monument that's going to go on the B list is, of course, the Basilica in Rome, which offers the idea cost reduction. It's not a bad monument, but it is locked behind Catholicism, so there's that. And up next, I'm going to do the most painful thing I've ever done in a video. The Brandenburg Gate is going to be, and it pains me so much to say this, a D-tier monument. Why is that? Guys, it offers right now army tradition and prestige from battles. As Brandenburg, if you don't have 100 prestige and 100 army tradition always, you're not playing this game right. And by the time that you actually upgrade this monument to give you extra prestige and army tradition from battles, it's going to be irrelevant. Why would you spend 8,500 ducats on a monument that would otherwise be absolutely irrelevant? I guess from a prestige point of view or a roleplay point of view, better yet, it makes sense to build the Brandenburg Gate, but bonus wise, it doesn't really give you anything amazing. So let's talk about the monuments that do give something amazing. Let's talk about the S tier. What would go on the S tier then? Obviously, the Batu Atish God that offers 10% discipline is there instantly. Even though it's locked behind Zoroastrianism, it is still worth it. And it's even worth converting to Zoroastrian if you want to stack up the discipline modifier. Second off would be the newly added temple in the north of India that I'm not going to bother pronouncing because I'm going to butcher it massively. The core creation reduction is absolute massive. And for world conquest, it's an absolute must. The Alhambra that offers 5% admin efficiency as well is amazing for world conquest and deserves a spot here, as do the forts in Malta, of course, and the Palace of Bangkok that offers the amazing governing capacity increase. We have another governing capacity increase from the El Escorial in Madrid, but not only that, we can mix this in with the new monument added in uh, Naples that offers a flat 100 governing capacity increase. So overall, these would be your top seven monuments that you always want to gun for if you can in your games, followed by the other six monuments as tier A, with the rest of them being so-so, not really amazing, not really bad. I'm going to add a few more here that you need to be aware of. The White House added recently as well is amazing, but it is a B tier because it is only available for the US or for former colonial nations. The Chan Chan Citadel is a B list as well because it is available to everybody and it offers two diplo relations. So in a world conquest or in a game with a lot of subjects, this can come in very handy. The minimum autonomy in territories one and the minimum autonomy in territories two together, these two monuments give you minus 25% autonomy in territories reduction. They're amazing, but they're religious law. The San Kinkotai Palace is a B tier, really great monument that gives you general cost reduction and that can be cheesed massively in multiplayer games, by the way. But once more is locked behind certain requirements, obviously, so we don't let the Brandenburg Gate be by itself. We're going to add the Malbourg Castle, which fully sucks PP, as does the Monastery in Sofia. Don't get me wrong, the stability cost reduction and religious unity is great, but it's religious lock and the only nation that could potentially take advantage of this is Byzantium in case they don't get absolutely slaughtered. So unless you're actually playing as Byzantium and you're struggling with your religion, which you shouldn't be, then this is going to come in handy. But I highly doubt that anyone playing as Byzantium is ever going to struggle with religion. If you do, watch my guide for that. And guess what? I just realized this is actually the uh, North Indian temple. This was the temple in uh, Majapahit. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you guys notice. And yes, they all kind of look the same. Other pretty great monuments include the Petra, which is an A tier list because it offers Diplo relations and reputation, as well as envoy travel time that in a world conquest or a speed run for a world conquest, this is probably the best monument in the game alongside the other S tier monument. The newly added Barakatra, which is the one in Dhaka, is also B tier because anyone can take advantage of it and it does offer massive trade bonuses. The previously confused Prabhnan Temple is an A tier list because it offers dev cost reduction minus 10%, but it is locked only for Hindu nations. So if it wasn't, it probably would qualify for S tier. And since we talked about the trade monument in Dhaka, we can also add to the B tier the trade monument in the south of Morocco that still stands offering a massive amount of caravan power. Similarly, the BAM Citadel is an A tier list because the extra merchant and the massive caravan power that it offers is ridiculously great, especially for landlocked nations. Two more D tier list monuments are the Caves and the Potosi monument, both 
both of these offer the interest per annum minus 0.5 work pretty well together but in a single player game I don't realistically see their actual use they're more of a multiplayer monument with long-term benefits more than anything else up next the Krakow cloth hall I actually think is an a grade monument because it offers two merchants aside from the other bonuses and from the beginning it starts as a level one which already makes Poland pretty strong Tower of London obviously is C grade because it offers the army tradition flat as is the forts that offer the naval force limit the Prague city center D grade as super situational and unless you're the Emperor you cannot take advantage of this a great monument for colonial nations but not so much for anything else the Micronesian one definitely qualifies for C grade the newly added African monument with the 10% tech cost reduction also is a great C grade Machu Picchu a B grade or actually I would even make it as an A grade because anyone can take advantage of the minus 15 idea cost reduction as long as you accept the Andean culture the Kremlin is a C grade for the amazing 10% overall unit cost reduction and the rest of these I'm gonna just assign as D grade also guys if there's monuments that you don't see on this list that's because they suck PP pee -pee massively so they didn't even qualify to be on this tier list so as you can tell a lot of new monuments have been added and some of them are pretty impressive especially the one in North India the one in Malta and all of the advisor cost reduction ones added I'm also really happy to see that they basically tried to improve the regional aspect with the monuments more than anything else and I hope that's a trend for the future as well if you guys want to see a similar video done for Victoria 3 you know what you gotta do you need to leave a like and also subscribe if you want to see the thousand year long mega campaign that I promised once we get a hundred thousand subs and I actually want to know what you guys want me to cover so if you have any ideas for a video you like to see me cover a specific nation or a specific topic or mechanic then leave a comment below and let me know I always read through my comments and I reply to most of you guys so don't hesitate to comment below and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support you guys are absolutely amazing